Hi, this is Vakas Qureshi. Today I'm going to share a case of a middle-aged male in his 50s who presented with anterior STEMI. As you can see here, this is the first shot of the contralateral side. I usually do the contralateral side shot first to understand the anatomy. As you can see, there's a obstructive, um, at least a 70, 80% lesion in the proximal portion of the RCA. This is the RAO view. You can see there's significant lesion. You see it on the left side. You can see there is some lesion in the proximal LAD. And there's almost a quarter of the of the left main. You can see there is circumflex coming off along with a high OM or a ramus vessel. Uh, then just on the side, there's a diagonal with a LED coming off. My initial thought was this is probably a thrombus. Let's look at the rest of the images. So on the angiogram, you can see this is the LAO view. In the LAO view, you can see the LED coming in the middle, right over here. The flow is slow, Demi two flow, while the circumflex is going on the side. So initially, the wire was going to the diagonal branch because of the angle. This is a JCL rad guide. Uh, we are using a six French JCL rad four guide here. As you can see, it's a wire that we used. And I tend to use a run through wire or a floppy wire if I cannot see the lumen clearly. Uh, but here I see the lumen distal to the lesion, so I'm using uh, pro water wire, but it's so stiff that it is not going into the LED. What should be done next? So the next thing that we did was, uh, which is not visible here, is that we switched the wire with a run-through wire, so the run-through wire would not go. The next option was that I used a microcatheter, which was part in the left main, and the attempt was made to cross with the Xi'an blue wire. Now Xi'an blue wire has a similar load tip as that of a run-through wire, so um, I thought it will cross, but it will start buckling. The reason for that is this is not just thrombus, but there's also calcium here, and it's very, um, uh, uh, deceiving at this time because uh, you never know, but the response to the wire will tell you what the issue is. Uh, it probably was a lesion which was growing for some time and now it's thrombosed. So there might be a small lumen going through because there's still flow. So what I did was that I downsized the wire to a tapered tip wire like Fielder XT at this time. And the Fielder XT, what you do on the Fielder XT is uh, you use a method where you are just turning the wire slowly on one direction rather than pushing it forward um, to find the lumen. And it did find the lumen and it, it was able to cross after that once that was achieved, after that, once it was achieved, we crossed with two wires, one wire into the diagonal, and the other wire into the proximal LED. The next thing was dilatation of that lesion since the patient was having hypotension and is was in shock. 
So the first thing was to attain a flow in the coronaries, which we were successful in. Once that was achieved, we went ahead and performed a balloon, kissing balloon inflation. Now I always start with the diagonal, which is the side branch first, as you can see, and pushing it into the side branch. And you might need just a little bit of overlap here. You don't need to have both markers overlapping each other, but one marker could be a little bit forward as, I, as you can see in here. Once that is done, next thing was a kissing balloon inflation. So first I inflate the side branch, then I uh, deflate it, and then I inflate both sides. And then I take a picture, as you can see, there's um, the, the lumen is much open now, but there's disease at the ostium, as well as within five millimeters of the diag. So at this time, I decided that I should do the mini crush since the patient was in pain. And it's difficult to do a mini crush uh, in this patient uh, because uh, of six French guide, but I put in a 2.5 by 20 stent in the diagonal artery here and a 3.0 by 20 in the proximal LED. So in mini crush, you, you go up with the stent in the diagonal first, the side branch first. Once that is up, then you take the wire out. See, this is dilated. Then you take the wire out. And then you go up with the main branch stent. Once the main branch stent is up, Now you see the side branch still has slow flow. So then you recross through the diagonal. And you go through the distal strut here. As you can see, I'm going through the distal strut. Once it's through the distal strut, next thing is to get and make sure that you're not through the main branch strut, which we were the first time. But then what we did was that I removed the wire and put it into the main branch and pulled the main branch wire and put it into the side branch. Once that was done, I advanced the balloon and this is a 1.5 balloon that opened the strut. Once it's open, I was able to put in a 2.5 balloon as you can see here. Once the 2.5 balloon was able to do that, I uh, performed a pot. Once the pot was formed, I was able to get a 2.75 balloon on the side and post dilate the diagonal stent. And then I did a 3.5 balloon in the main branch. After that, we did a 2.75 and a 2.5 balloons uh, kissing balloon inflation. This is the final result. The flow is still a little bit slow, probably because of the infarct, but it's much better now. Thank you.